all know that Rengoku didn't stand a chance against Akaza in the Mugen train. But what if Gyu was also present in the fight? How would the story of Demon Slayer change with this one minor tweak to the story? The events occur the same with Rengoku's solo mission to board that train and investigate why an entire passenger cart just disappeared. In addition, the Tanjiro squad was also on board to find out more about the Hinokami Kagura. However, there is one major change in this timeline. After sending Rengoku on this train mission, Kagaya Ubuyashiki had a hunch that something bigger was going to happen. So to be safe, he also sent Giyu as backup to aid Rengoku if needed. Giyu starts heading towards the scene, but it's going to take him a while to get there. On the other hand, the fight against Enmu is just about to end. They successfully defeat the Lower Moon One, and just like in the main series, Akaza arrives. Most of the entire fight stays the same as in the original timeline with Rengoku fighting off Akaza to the point where the sun almost came up. The duel was just as emotional, and Akaza forces a wounded Rengoku to use his strongest form, Rengoku. Rengoku prepares his stance, and so does Akaza. Both of them charge at each other, and just before Akaza can punch a hole through Rengoku, his senses start going crazy as he picks up another massive fighting spirit rapidly approaching him. This distraction forces Akaza to narrowly dodge Rengoku and the mystery fighter's fatal attacks. As the dust settles, Giyu is seen helping Rengoku get back on his feet, while Akaza is extremely pissed at Giyu's interference. Without giving Akaza a breather, Giyu and Rengoku dash forward with the intent to finish off the Upper Moon 3. Seeing two Hashiras out to get him, Akaza welcomes the challenge and goes all out. Giyu uses Dead Calm to blitz behind Akaza and cut off his limbs. This puts Akaza in a dire state because in that split second interval between Giyu's Dead Calm, Rengoku was already prepared to dish out his most powerful attack for the second time. Akaza immediately regrows one of his arms and tries to block Rengoku's sword, but it just goes through while Giyu also slashes at his head. To make matters worse, even though Rengoku doesn't have enough strength to completely decapitate him, Giyu has enough support for both their blades to slowly inch their way to the other side of his neck. In the end, Akaza was beheaded and the Demon Slayers have won the battle, or so they thought. There lies a decapitated demon on his knees. However, Rengoku notices something odd about the headless Akaza. It wasn't disintegrating. The next instant, the headless corpse lands a surprise attack on Giyu, making him fly into a tree. Rengoku tried to attack again, but was suffering from his injuries. Akaza uses this opening to run into the tree line as the sun was rising and he successfully escapes with a newly regenerated head. After the commotion settles, Rengoku would have to heal since he had a lot of wounds. And it would be the same with the Tanjiro squad since they were injured too. In the meantime, Giyu would report everything that has happened to Ubuyashiki and the other Hashira. And it's at this moment that the core also realizes that some demons that are extremely strong can fight off death if it is needed. So cutting off their heads won't be enough from this point on. With what Giyu noticed during this fight, he insists on taking Tanjiro under his wing and personally trains the MC to make him stronger. Imagine being one of them and realizing that the only weakness you thought demons had doesn't exist anymore. This would shock everyone to their core and they would immediately think of some ways to fight against this issue. But how about Akaza? Is he okay? Well, yes and no. You see, in the original timeline, Akaza successfully killed Rengoku, but Muzan was still angry with him. Now imagine how angry Muzan is after he not only failed to kill a Hashira, but almost disintegrated to dust himself. It's best to say that Akaza's cells were not in good shape and Muzan punished him so severely that it took him three whole days to fully heal. However, Muzan did not kill him because he may be evil, but he's not stupid. He acknowledges Akaza's value and strength, so that's why he set Akaza free. Not to mention, Akaza is also the first demon to resist death after being decapitated, so that's a plus. This leads us to the Entertainment District arc, and a ton of changes would happen here. First off, Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu won't come with Tengen, so it'll be Awai and the other two girls from the Butterfly Mansion. This is because the Tanjiro squad won't even get the chance to see Tengen. Right after they healed, Rengoku would take both Zenitsu and Inosuke away, and they would train under him. It would have been Tanjiro, but like I said earlier, Giyu took the MC under his wing. Because of this, the fight against the Upper Moon siblings would be totally different. First off, Tengen wouldn't be able to find his wives because Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke were the first ones to find them. Not only that, Aoi and the others wouldn't even stand a chance. And once Daki finds out they're spies, she would also capture them. The only one that can turn this situation around is Tengen. And seeing as he's the only strong fighter here, he can't possibly win against the two Upper Moons. Let's say he doesn't leave his wives, and he keeps on searching and eventually finds them. He'll be forced to fight the Upper Moon's six siblings, and he'll inevitably lose. Even if he does escape with his wives, he'll still die because in the main series, it was Nezuko who saved him as her pyrokinesis took care of Gyutaro's poison. So in either outcome, Tengen Uzui would still die, replacing Rengoku's place as the first dead Hashira. Aside from that, there's an even bigger problem because Tengen got killed by the Upper Moon Six. They live on and will eventually appear in one of the most vital parts of the storyline. Meanwhile, Giyu trains Tanjiro intensely to make him master the water breathing technique. And by doing so, Tanjiro fails to hone his skills in using the Hinokami Kagura.
Agura. What's even more interesting here is that this isn't the only change in the entire series because in the Swordsmith Village arc, things are going to become even crazier. You see, at this point in time, only Giyu and Tanjiro are present in the village. Now, why would Giyu be in the Swordsmith Village, you ask? Well, Giyu's there because he and Tanjiro broke their swords during training. Now, originally, it was Gyoko who located the Swordsmith Village, and Muzan sent him and Han Tengu to destroy it. But in this what-if story, confident in the Upper Moon Four's abilities, Muzan sends him alone to destroy the Swordsmith Village for good. On the night of the attack, Han Tengu starts decapitating himself to unleash his other forms. After releasing all five emotions, Han Tengu begins his attack, attacking the village in multiple spots simultaneously. In this scenario, Mitsuri and Muichiro are not present in the village, so it will just be Giyu alongside Tanjiro. Both of them end up luring the five emotions, making it a five versus two fight. As the battle between the Demon Slayers and Han Tengu's emotions goes into full swing, Giyu and Tanjiro are getting tired since Han Tengu's emotions are practically unkillable if Han Tengu is still alive. In the end, Tanjiro unlocks his Demon Slayer mark for the first time and figures out the secret behind the power, allowing him and Giyu to successfully kill Han Tengu way before the sun starts to rise. Another big change in this part of the story is that Muzan would never discover that Nezuko was immune to the sun. Because of this, Muzan would never get the idea of invading the Demon Slayer core and killing Ubuyashiki. Moving on, instead of the Hashira training arc, we get something different for this alternate timeline. After the events of the Swordsmith Village arc, Ubuyashiki sends Giyu, Rengoku, and Tanjiro to investigate the mysterious disappearances in the mountains. Well, it turns out the cause of the disappearances was none other than Akaza himself. That's because after the Mugen train incident, Akaza needed to replenish his power, so he started hunting humans to recover. After seeing Giyu and Rengoku, Akaza was understandably super angry, so they immediately squared off and began round two. In the end, Giyu and Rengoku unlocked their marks and pulled a harmonious attack of fire and water that ended Akaza's life for good. Meanwhile, Tanjiro served as support and made sure that Akaza had no escape routes while he observed the entire battle. Although he only watched that fight, it did do something to Tanjiro, though. Seeing Giyu and Rengoku's breathing styles complementing each other, Tanjiro got the crazy idea of incorporating Hinokami Kagura into the water breathing technique, which effectively boosted his abilities. The news of Akaza's death, piled onto the fact that Hantengu also died, did not sit well with Muzan, making him even more furious at the Upper Moons for being unable to kill the Hashiras. On the other hand, while Muzan is out throwing temper tantrums, Yushiro and Lady Tamayo are out gathering intel against the Demon King. Long story short, Yushiro locates Muzan's whereabouts and informs the Demon Slayer Corps. With the Demon King's location exposed, Ubuyashiki makes his move and sends the Hashiras and the rest of the Demon Slayer Corps on one final mission to end their nightmare once and for all. As the Demon Slayer Corps commenced their ambush, Nakame came in clutch and transported everybody inside the Infinity Castle, where most of the fight stayed the same, much like in the original story. Just as they entered the castle, Giyome, Sanemi, and Muichiro spot Jutaro, Daki, and Gyoko lurking in the shadows and instantly cut off their heads without a second for them to react. Since Akaza is dead, Giyu ends up helping Shinobu, Kanao, and Inosuke in fighting against Doma, which led to them successfully killing the Upper Moon 2 without any casualties. On the other hand, Tanjiro and Rengoku join Sanemi, Giyome, Genya, and Muichiro in fighting Kokushibo, and with their combined forces, they ensure the Upper Moon 1's death with only Muichiro losing an arm. In the end, the only one remaining is the Demon King himself. Muzan was really mad at the situation he was in, but he was thankful because all his enemies were gathered in one place, saving him energy, and he could get rid of them all in one go. But with almost all the Hashiras present and bearing the Demon Slayer mark, things wouldn't go the way the Demon King wanted them to. In the end, Muzan was pushed back into a tight corner. With the sun starting to rise, Muzan became desperate to escape, so he started fighting back fiercely, incapacitating some of the tired Hashiras in one blow. However, Tanjiro seized this opening and pinned Muzan down on the ground using his sword. Unable to escape, Muzan started ripping Tanjiro's body apart, but through sheer determination, Tanjiro held on tightly and sacrificed himself to end Muzan's life as the sun rose and saved everyone. If you enjoyed this Demon Slayer theory, make sure to subscribe and click the like button so I can continue to do more videos in the future.